hello and welcome to the project so let's do our project so the first page we'll create is access the browser url so what i'm going to do i'm going to use this bootstrap and we're going to say access we're trying to access the url from the history right so what we'll do we're going to open that folder project folder right and it has this html file okay so what we're going to do we're going to create two links let's create that link and we'll add some event to it on click event we have seen how to create on on click event and we'll add a method called go back right and then we will say go back here right we're creating a link called go back we'll create one more link called go forward okay and then we have a we have a method in javascript using which we can actually go in forward in terms of the history right now you can write your javascript here history dot forward okay similarly we'll write this method go back so how to write your javascript script so how to write a function you say function go back here you can say history dot back all right so let's run this program so this program has two links go back on go forward so you this see these two buttons we are trying to achieve the same thing with these two buttons php bootcamp and now when you go back so you see you have a forward icon right which is enabled now when you click this go forward you basically went to docs and let's say you have now this enable back button so when you click on go back you go back to that page right so you're doing this back and front right you're doing this back and front operations with this right let's say you go to bing.com right and then you go back now the next page is bing.com right so you go forward to bing.com you come back you go back to bing.com so there is an history object already available for us using which you can execute the method called back and front right using which you can actually navigate onto the web pages so this basically so this help you understand that there are some objects available using which you can go back and front or you can do many other operations on the browser as well what we are trying to do here is this controls that you see right is all written in javascript that's what i'm trying to show you you go forward or go back let's say you go to bing.com again right go back so instead of clicking this and this they both execute the same code right see right the well, same thing so whatever the browser script is been running we are trying to execute the browser script okay understand is very important concept you can get access to all the things that browser actually does on your web page right and you can get that with the help of all these objects that is available for you to work with all right so that's all about it and i'll see you in the next one hello and welcome to the project so let's create a form validation page We'll create a form and then we'll validate the form okay that's the exercise we're going to do it here now so i'm going to copy paste the form here so this is the form that i've copy pasted okay let's open this up first okay so it has a name it has email age and then option button and then you have agree to our terms okay so you have checkbox you have radio button then you have all the text boxes so this is a good form for us to validate right we can see how to access the text boxes how to access the option buttons radio buttons then how to access the checkbox okay so that is basically the form that we have here so the form starts with the form tag right and then you have this inputs 
right all these inputs of different type one is text one is radio and one is checkbox and the magic happens with the id you give them a name right every element has a name and then also if you look at checkbox checkbox also have a name all right so how to access this so when someone clicks on submit we call a method so let's define this method check form data okay so let's write that function okay we say where message so we'll store all our details in the message so first we'll get the text box name so document dot get element by id and what is that element name that is text underscore name okay and dot value all right so now t name actually has the value of the text name similarly we're gonna get the email then we're gonna get the age okay this is how you extract the value from the text box so you can say email and you can say age okay so this is how you access the text box content so how to access radio button radio values so we say t gender one document dot get element by id we have given an id to it so radio one so this has a property called checked okay similarly we're gonna have for gender two radio two and similarly we can access the checkbox you say checkbox okay and the name of the checkbox that is the id is checkbox okay i'm going to check whether it is checked or not okay so let's print them so we can say message is equal to name colon t name all right and similarly we're gonna add the rest of the fields right we have email we have age then we have gender that's the two then we have the checkbox okay so now we can say it's email age male female and then agreed all right so this is how we basically access the form elements you can you know how to access the text box radio button and the checkbox all right so we have the message and we have a paragraph let's t message so let's assign this data to our paragraph okay how you're gonna do it document dot we find the element right dot inner html is equal to message okay so we get the message and we assign to that the paragraph okay so let's run this so you have name email age is 12 agree to our term submit okay so you can see you have your data already here the male is true female is false agree is true if you remove this make it female click submit you know change the value so you're able to access all the form fields you're able to access text fields you're able to access option button you're able to access the checkbox as well the code is very simple and the magic happens from get element by id you mention the name of that field right by creating an id for it and then you use get element by id to search that value and get the value of that element 
fine so that's how you basically access a form element okay and then now you have the data you can validate it as well that's all first lecture on form validation i'll see you in the next one Okay, so let's do another project called guessing game. Wherein we will ask user to enter a value and we'll ask him to guess a number from 1 to 10. We'll provide the answer in our code. We'll ask him to guess what is that number inside the code. Okay, so let's write that program. So we copy paste this, put in guessing number game. So what we're going to do is first we're going to have two variables. We have the message that we want to display. All right. And we have the answer here. Okay. The user has to guess this answer. Okay. That's number five. Now till he guess, he can have a loop. He can write a loop till he guess that answer. And that till that answer is equal to, let's say whatever is the input till that he can make a guess. Okay. And now you can say prompt him to enter the number. So we can say guess the number from 1 to 10. All right. So now he will enter some value. Now we have stored it in the input 1. And input 1 we will parse it to int so that now we can. When you parse it, you can convert a string to integer. Alright, and now you can do the comparison if input 1 not equal to answer then what you can do is you can alert saying nope wrong alright and till it is done okay later you can say message You guessed it right this is the answer okay you have the message that now you can display that message okay and till when you can you know this loop keep executing and you won't be seeing output once you guess then basically you will see the answer onto the web page so we'll say guess the number we can say script and now we can write the message okay so nothing fancy about writing the message the whole magic happens from the do while loop wherein you keep asking him to guess a number from 1 to 10 and let's see how many trials he will be taking to guess the number okay so let's guess the number i assume you don't know the number so you enter one okay nope wrong four nope wrong then you enter the correct number that is five then basically guess the number you guess it right five is the answer right you can refresh again okay a simple game right you can actually write it for your friends or you know you can write it to try out how things work you can enhance it further you can have like minimum three tries and all those things you can do that by saying now you see he cannot come out of it right so you can say you can do a counter here which is equal to zero and you're gonna say counter plus plus If counter is equal to 3 you break from the loop okay and once you break from the loop you need to know whether he has answered it correct or not right because there could be cases where they have answered it correct right so you're gonna say flag false okay and let's say he guessed it right let's say the answer is guessed it right then you can you can typically say flag is equal to true 
and then I can break it okay now here in the message you can actually have a flag okay if flag means if true means he is able to guess it then you can say sorry better try again right so what we are doing is we are trying to make him check only for three times right let's do this now so this is the first time he is entering that let's close all the pages so let's test this let's open the page so we say one two three and then the fourth one last one right so because it starts with zero it's run for four times you can always start it with one right and then you refresh the page it's one two and three okay and then you come out of the loop right you cannot guess it but if you guess it for the first time then say you guess it right five is the answer so very simple to play around because we have seen all this you know assignment operators you know and how to do do and write an if condition how to write do while you know all those things we have checked so we know how to write javascript from the language basics then you can apply any logic that you have that you want to write it in the web page as well and now you can control everything all the scripting can be controlled via the javascript onto the web page all right so that's all about this project on guessing game and we'll see in the next one